The music business has done a lot of changing in the last five to 10 years. In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly what changes you need to know to take advantage of this new digital era. What's going on everybody, it's Daxton Page. Welcome back to Musician Mastery. And so, how many people have felt the situation where musicians have been expected to do more? They've been expected to do more than they ever have throughout history as an artist. And you know what? That is true. Things are tougher for an artist now than ever, but I will say, while they're tougher in one regard, they're easier in another, because it used to be a situation where a lot of the power of the industry and what happened, whose albums were released, who got promoted, all these different kinds of things were determined by labels. And now that labels in the last five to 10 years have taken more of a backseat to their traditional roles and have had to adapt to the new music marketplace, you need to understand that we are in a situation, while, wait, while there may be more burden on you, to do more things that are more entrepreneurial. You know, you gotta learn how to market yourself, gotta learn how to put together good products for your fans and cool offers and have good, and not on, the, on top of that, you have to write great songs and put on good shows and all that kind of good stuff, right? You're expected to do all those things, but at the expense now where you don't have to worry about control over your music. It used to be a situation where you would still do a lot of work, but you would have no control. So a lot of people that are artists, they have this vision in their head where all they do is write and they get money and it's all good, right? It's all taken care of from there. That's sort of a fallacy, you know, where people think that that's all they have to do to reach the goals they have in their head. Now, I'm not saying that you can't make a decent living just getting a good chunk from your Spotify and being a Spotify-only artist. You don't even play gigs or anything. Like You can actually make some decent money that way. But to think that all you did was write your art, release it, and then it just made some money is a complete fallacy, right? So a lot of artists still have that in their head, so they think, I'm gonna release it, and then the label will pick it up and they're gonna do its magic and they're gonna do the thing and then I'll get all the income and stuff. So some people are gonna be working, it's just not gonna be me. Well, that sort of was a bit of a reality back in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and even a bit of the 2000s to 2010 era, especially in the more popular genres like pop and country and rap. And what we need to recognize is the shift that's happened here is that while there is more onus on artists to be more entrepreneurial, there is now more control, more freedom that you have over your music career, and you get to actually benefit from the fruits of your labor, and you don't have to split it with anybody. That's one of the beautiful things about it. So labels' roles have kind of shifted. They understand that it's no longer a situation where there's the undiscovered artist that the label picks up and blows up. That's very rare. What mostly happens is they find people that are, that are already generating the marketing, the fan base, the following, the community, they're looking for artists that have already done that, okay? So even if you are someone, I'm not one of those people, and maybe you are, so that's totally fine, but if you're one of those people that's looking for labels eventually to be your saving grace, well, if that's a goal that you honestly wanna pursue, well, then you better get to work, because even if that is your goal, you're still gonna to have to do a lot of stuff like marketing, branding, putting out content to get those fans to even be, what would you say, even be looked at by labels that are worth a damn. Because there's some labels that say they're gonna blow you up and maybe they're not Warner or they're not Atlantic, but they're gonna blow you up. If you really honestly wanna work with a big label, you're better off just doing the work, building the audience yourself. And heck, I guarantee that most artists, if you go through that, by the time you get through the other side to where you're like, okay, I'm ready to go talk to a label, you'll be making enough money on your own that you might even question the decision then. You would question the decision like, wow, I built this audience. They're actually paying me. You know, I've got my diehard 1,000 fans that are paying me income that's basically giving me a living. Uh, why exactly do I need to go to a label again? If I'm gonna be doing, basically I've been doing what they would have been doing if I was paying them, so why don't I just continue to do it myself, right? You're gonna, I'm, I guarantee you're gonna come to these conclusions. As someone who's worked with labels, good and bad, I'm telling you that you would rather be in the situation where you're building your audience and that labels are now more like venture capital. So if you go to like watch Shark Tank, right? There's people that go up there that are like, hey, we're generating you know, 10 grand a month in revenue or 20 grand a month in revenue and we're just looking for some extra money to help really blow us up. 
So notice they didn't say, hi, I have this new product idea and I've never sold any, but it's a really good idea, right? Those don't usually go over very well at all because they don't know any numbers. The sharks are just like, yeah, I mean, it may be a good idea, but have you tested it? Is this all just on a hunch, right? So even in that situation, if you look at the labels as the sharks in Shark Tank, if you're even thinking about going to a label, you gotta have a business that's already generating, so to speak. What's your analogous of like, I'm making 10 grand a month and I'd like to make 50 grand a month with the help of a label? That's the more kind of mindset you would wanna have about a label nowadays. So don't look at labels in the first five, 10, and for some of you, maybe even 15 years of your career. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. You're like, Dax, 15 years? It's like, yeah. I've been working 10 years and I had to basically start over halfway through it. So you can maybe call it five years, but it's really been 10 years of work. It may take some people 10, 15 years to get to that level they really envision themselves at, right? And once you get there, I guarantee you're probably not even gonna wanna do work with the label unless you're really trying to go mass, mass, mass audience, like, like hundreds of millions and you get billions on your streams and stuff, maybe at that point, it's worth partnering with the label. But again, I guarantee at that point, that'll just be more of a big decision move in your business and you'll have way more leverage to actually make a good deal happen because you'll already have a business running so you can walk away. What happens nowadays? If you have no business, no fans, the label puts an offer, what are you gonna say? No, you have no leverage. You have no leverage. They have all the money, all the resources and you don't have anything. So why put yourself in that situation? So the first thing you need to understand is that in the new music business, the roles of labels have shifted. Do not pay attention to those old kind of things. Now, one of the biggest disruptors in the last five to 10 years is, has been TikTok. TikTok has been one of those things that's been introduced and a lot of people sort of made fun of it early on. It's like, oh, that's just stuff that like 13 year olds are on. But really, if you're not on TikTok, you don't understand the power of its organic reach. I put together like meme content one time for my band's uh, TikTok and it got 33,000 organic views, like impressions or whatever. It's, it's one of those things where Organic reach is back. Remember back when you used to post on Facebook and you were able to get it to more masses of people? That is back, okay? You can actually get, and mostly I would say, it's not just TikTok. The TikTok disruption, as I call it, really was the introduction of Reels, okay? TikTok was the first app that created Reels, as we know it. And then Instagram, and then Facebook, and these kind of companies. I actually, maybe uh, Snapchat had stuff out before uh, before TikTok, but I was never really on Snapchat a bunch, so maybe correct me if I'm wrong there. But TikTok was the one who really popularized it, made it global and just massive, right? So what happens is all these platforms start adapting Reels, and Reels are by far the best way to get organic engagement, bar none. If you could post almost exclusively Reel videos, you would probably get way more reactions, way more engagement on your page. So. One of the first things I want you to do is I want you to go take all your videos that you're about to post and make sure that you can fit them into that uh, that dimension. I don't forget what it is. It's like 11 by 9 or something like. I don't I don't remember what the specs are. But that orientation, that portrait orientation, where you can view your video and then post it as a reel. Don't post it just as the video on your feed. Post it as a reel. It'll get more organic interactions. I, I've, sometimes I've posted videos that get like a hundred views as like a video in the feed, but then I post like the same video as a reel and it instantly gets 1300 views. So that's the difference. That's one of the biggest disruptions that I've seen is now that people know that, people know that there is this hardcore reliance, you could call it, on reels now for organic views, there's a lot of competition. So you gotta start figuring out fun ways that you can use your music inside of real content. So even, like think of a band, I want you guys to all go look at Papa Roach. Okay, say what you want about Papa Roach and their music. Their TikTok game is very, very impressive, okay? And you should use them as a great way to figure out how can I like take my music and use it to create TikToks that are exciting and make people wanna watch it. That is one of the best ways that you're gonna grow an audience nowadays. So we've, we've understood a couple things so far. We don't have to really rely on labels to build the, uh, to build the audience anymore. 
Okay, that's the job of the artist, the music entrepreneur to go build the audience. And so then you think, okay, Dax, well, if I'm going to build an audience, how am I going to do that? Well, reels are going to be one of your best ways that you're going to do that. You're going to go out there, you're going to post organic content as much as you can on reels, maybe two a day if you can manage. That's like some high you know, frequency posting, but it will do the job, right? It's all about volume from posting once a week, once or twice a week to uh, once a day, twice a day. It adds up over time, it compounds. So reels are gonna be one of your biggest places as an up and coming independent artist where you can start to get organic content to a lot of people. Okay, so really don't take it, don't sleep on you know these reels. They're they're gonna be around for a long time. There's a reason that even YouTube adapted the shorts, right? So there may be shorts of this uh, video that you'll see later because I understand that that's gonna be where the place, uh, some of the places where the eyeballs are gonna be at, and that's where I need to be. Okay, now that's really kind of leaning on to the next thing is the importance of content. What kind of content are you posting? Well, to me, what I would think about is how eye-grabbing is it? So can you find an angle that's very eye-grabbing? What other contexts can your music be used in? Is there a popular meme going on right now that your song would fit up perfectly with? I remember uh, when the whole Chris Rock, Will Smith fiasco was going down in the media. When he came up, there's a meme uh, or uh, something that someone created where when he slaps Chris Rock, it like animates Chris Rock where he like flies all over the place or something. It was just ridiculous looking. Like he just slapped Chris out of existence. And uh, there was a band that took that moment in their song right where the song punches in and timed it with the meme so that when it's when it hit, it's a great meme that got a lot of tra uh, traction because it's a great use of popular meme here how can i introduce my music into the popular meme there's nothing wrong with that like some people feel like weird like why am i being so strategic about my social media posts it makes me feel uncomfortable i'm just this insecure shy artist who's you know trying to do stuff in the shadows it's like guys if you're serious about becoming a professional if you're serious about being a music entrepreneur you need to get rid of that shyness. You need to get rid of that. What you need to understand is that if you have those feelings, you have those feelings because you're not sold on yourself and you need to get sold on what you're doing, okay? There is nothing wrong with promoting yourself. It doesn't make you cheesy. What makes you cheesy is being cheesy. You understand? It's not about the fact that you're marketing and trying to get people to like watch and listen to your stuff. That doesn't make you cheesy. If you start going Billy Mays here, then yeah, maybe you're a little bit chilly, uh, a little bit cheesy. Um, probably chilly too. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, the whole point of it is you need to get rid of this fear of oh, I don't want to talk in front of the camera, guys. I've seen a lot of these musicians who can own a crowd when they're when they have the mic in their hands and they're in front of a mass of people, one to many. They're like. I can, I can promote anything. They'll talk about their merch table all day. They've got enthusiastic personalities and all this kind of stuff. And then if I put them in a room by themselves and said, I want you to have that same charisma, but I want you to talk about your tour dates coming up. I want you to talk about your new single. I want you to talk about this merch bundle that you got going on. Those same people, all of a sudden they just kind of lock up and they're like, hey, uh, what's going on? Uh, so uh, we've uh, got, uh, it's like, oh my God, what just happened? I saw, you know, I just saw someone up there like one moment they're killing it and then the next moment they don't know how to speak in front of people. And what that is is a mental thing. There's nothing different between you performing your instrument in front of a group of people and doing what I'm doing right now, speaking into a camera with nobody into a room. There's nothing different, guys. It's all a mentality. It's all an attitude. It's all a mindset shift. So make sure that you're not all like hung up on these weird things of like, do I look weird? Do am I am I wearing the right shirt for the you know like, it sounds silly, but these are thoughts that go through artists' heads sometimes when the camera gets rolled on them. They're not in this crystalline perfect scenario where everything is perfect, and so they don't want to take action. They don't want to do anything unless everything is perfect, guys. Perfection will kill your music career because you'll you won't take action because nothing is ever perfect. If you wait to take action until something's perfect, you'll never do it. So please stop waiting for things to be perfect. Start taking action even though things are tough because you're smart enough to figure it out. You're smart enough to go through the other side and figure out a way through it. So now I want to kind of close on the last thing that I think is super important about this new change in the music business is that 
there is more of a requirement now. So we've gone through all this stuff. We understand, okay, labels aren't gonna build the audience for me. I have to build the audience. So I can go post reels, thanks to this whole TikTok disruption, I can go post reels on like, go post YouTube, uh, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, and TikTok posts, right? If you start utilizing those four, you're gonna have a lot of traction, right? So now you're starting to build your audience. And so the importance of content is just like, it's, it's dire, right? How good you are at posting content could make or break the, your career right now. And so now there is more importance on you to get educated on being an entrepreneur. What does an entrepreneur do? Now, the first thing I would suggest is I have this free ebook called the Side Hustle Starter Kit, which gets 72 ideas written down for you to show you how you could all of a sudden, okay, I'm gonna quit my nine to five job and I'm gonna start this side hustle so now I can focus all on my music. I can start making videos for my music all day, right? I can dedicate a whole day to it because I'm the boss, I set up my situation this way. So I think that's the first thing. It's gonna help you get just more freedom, but as far as learning the strategies of entrepreneurship, what do entrepreneurs think about? How do I like set myself up for the future and all this kind of good stuff, right? The initial uh, principles and frameworks that I use in my business are in a program called the Money Smart Musician program. So if you go to moneysmartmusician.com, you can go ahead and check out that program today. I, t I highly recommend it, it's totally worth it, and it's one of those things where I distilled the core principles that took me years and thousands of dollars to understand from coaches and mentors, and I gave them to you guys inside of this program. So I really hope you guys check it out. I know it'll do a great service for your life, and that's what I'm here to do. That's what why this channel exists. So if you like this channel, please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share it with somebody who you think needs to hear this message. If you think there's someone out there that could really benefit from this, then go ahead, share it with them, share it with the world, because this community of Money Smart Musicians that's on this channel right now, and if you're watching, I consider you one of the family. We're, we're here to change the world for musicians. We're here to create a world where artists are no, are no longer held down by the fear of, am I gonna be good enough? Is everything perfect, you know? Am I ever gonna make any money as an artist? We're here to get rid of those fears and actually like talk about strategies that help give you freedom, give you your time back. And so if you want, go check out the uh, Side Hustle Starter Kit. It's free, I'll put the link in the description or you can go to moneysmartmusician.com and check out my program that's got all the principles of entrepreneurship. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you on another one. Take care.